Is Qualcomm telling the truth about X Elite destroying the Intel competition? Well, we have the Surface Laptop 7 with the X Elite and the Surface Laptop 6 with Intel's Meteor Lake Core Ultra 7, the fastest version for thin and light laptops. And today, we're gonna compare a bunch of benchmarks and real world tests along with battery life to see how much of a difference do we actually get. Now here are the full specs side by side and you guys could see that they're similarly equipped as far as RAM and the SSDs, but the Intel version actually costs $400 more. Now this one was actually released just a few months ago, mostly for enterprise and for business and Microsoft doesn't really want regular people to buy it because they were launching their new Copilot PCs, but I bought this with overnight shipping to make this video for you guys and both of these laptops are at one 100% battery life. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect both of these and we will see how they do, not only in terms of performance, but battery. Now opening this up right away, I noticed some major differences because you can see those fat bezels that are the same as the Surface Laptop 5 and the 4 and the previous ones. The screens are not as bright, the quality is not as good. And with that, the trackpad is a diving board design, unlike the really nice new magnetic one. And then on the side, we get an extra USB-C port with the Surface Laptop 7 with X Elite. It's also a little bit thinner as well. So this machine is really upgraded despite being less expensive. Now I do have both of these set to the best performance modes, just so you guys know that. And I wanna start out testing out the 512 gigabyte SSDs. All right guys, this is something I wasn't expecting. The Surface Laptop 6 has faster SSDs. We have 12% faster in terms of read speed. And then we have 42% faster in terms of the write speeds. And I also noticed that during this SSD test, the Intel-based laptop, the fan started spinning up already, which is not good for this easy test. And now I have Geekbench 6 opened up right here. And I wanna mention that this is the 80 SKU of the X Elite that goes up to four gigahertz. Whereas this is the Intel 165H. It's actually slightly higher than most of them, which are 155Hs, goes up to five gigahertz of the boost clock. Both have 16 gigs, so let's go ahead and run this. And here are the scores, and look at the X Elite. That single core score is 21% higher. And then for multi-core score, this is actually great for an Intel system, but it is still 15% lower than the high score of the X Elite. And while we're here, I also wanna do a compute test for the graphics, both running Vulkan, which gives us higher scores. We have Intel Arc compared to the Adreno X185. And look at that, the Intel Arc graphics actually beats out the X Elite graphics by about 15 percent for compute tasks. Of course, we are gonna do some other tasks here in just a sec. But first, I wanna do a web browsing test here. We're using the same browsers with the latest speedometer 3.0. And look at this difference right here. We have 20.1 compared to 25.2, 25% faster for the X Elite, even though it has a lower boost clock. And this just shows off the snappiness for a web browser, web applications. And I have to say, when I was setting up this Intel laptop, I forgot how slow Windows laptops are. Even closing Windows down, opening programs, I got used to the snappiness of X Elite like a Mac, so going back was a little bit frustrating. And now I have Figma opened up, the desktop app, and this project is brought to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California, and I already know how quick and responsive this is with the X Elite. Zooming in is super smooth. As you guys see that was loaded up pretty much instantly let's try on the intel one little choppiness coming in i already hear the fan going okay there you go it loaded up so definitely we're having some delays guys i don't know if you guys can hear that fan but this is something you don't have to deal with anymore now i have 12 of these high resolution layers and we are going to go ahead and export these so that took a minute 51 seconds on the x elite compared to two minutes and four seconds on the intel so we have a difference of about 12 percent in favor of 
the X Elite, and it did that completely silently, where this is still cooling down. And now I have Cinebench 2024 opened up right here. We are gonna push these CPUs to their limits and check out the temps um, and clock speeds here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable this 10 minute stress test here and I'm gonna start the multi-core test. And right over here, I have the hardware info opened up. And wow, the Intel just hit 5360 watts at peak. Of course, we can't see it on this one, but as far as temperatures, we hit 101 on the Intel, 102 right there, where here our highest is 96. These XLE chips do run fairly uh, cool, and looking at the clock speeds, we have 2.8 at the highest that I'm seeing here compared to 2.9, 2.8. So after they heat it up, which was very quick, they're kind of similar, but on the Intel side, we do have the efficiency cores running at about 1100 megahertz. Then we have some cores at 2000. So we have a wide range compared to consistent 12 performance cores. And once again, with the Intel, the fan is on pretty much right at the start. I can hear it. Whereas the X Elite is still silent. Actually, right there, started to spin up. Let me see how long this has been. Okay, about a minute and a half for it to start spinning up. And now that both fans have spun up, I'm noticing some differences. A loudness might be about similar, but the sound is different. This is like a low end hum that's less annoying, whereas this one is a higher frequency, kind of like a whine sound that stands out more. Now on the Intel, we can see the wattage. It jumps around, but it's settling in right around 30, 32 watts. On the X Elite, we can't see it, but uh, this one is supposed to be rated about 23 watts. So it is using quite a bit less power to do this task. And now after about five minutes, looking at the frequencies, the X Elite jumps from 2.5 to 2.7 gigahertz back to 2.5. Whereas with the Intel, the fastest cores are running at about 2.3, then sometimes they slow down and all the other cores are running slower. So even though this is rated up to five gigahertz, in reality, you're not getting that when you load up the system. And now I busted out our thermal camera. You guys see the heat there on the X Elite, 47 degrees on the hot spot, and then we have some heat where that fan is. And look at that, 45 on the Intel. It's actually running cooler, but the heat is spread out. So I wonder if we have dual fans on this one compared to a single fan with the heat moving into that corner. All right, guys, wow, that was interesting. Both of them did two full runs. We have 867 on the X Elite and 585 on the Intel version. So that's a 48% difference in performance. And we know that the X Elite used a lot less power as well. So that is incredible. And now let's go ahead and push the graphics in terms of gaming performance. I have 3D Marks Steel Nomad Lite opened up right here, which is new and it is representative of newer games. And wow, look at that. We have 15.31 frames per second with the X Elite compared to 20.89. That is 33% better gaming performance in terms of graphics. Plus, you know that with the Intel system, you're not gonna have any compatibility issues or any issues in related to optimization for ARM. So if you care about gaming, the Intel chip is still quite a bit faster with the ARC graphics. And now I have Blender opened up right here. And even though the graphics aren't very powerful on the Intel, it could still use that to help speed up uh, the performance. Whereas with X Elite, the graphics just won't work for that. So we are gonna go ahead and render on both of these. And I wanna see what our differences are gonna be. All right, guys, we have a minute and 18 seconds on the Intel compared to four minutes 18 with the X Elite. That's almost four times faster and man, do the graphics on the Intel system work well for compute? Now, if we were running it in CPU, it would actually take longer than the X Elite, but nobody would do that. This works great for simple renders like this, whereas the X Elite, this is just not a strong suit. And now I have Lightroom Classic opened up right here, which is gonna push the CPUs. It's gonna use the graphics and the RAM. And I'm gonna start out with just switching through some of these images. Let's see how quick these react. 
And surprisingly, the X Elite is just slightly ahead applying all of these edits that I have to each single um, raw image here. Now I wanna mention that the XLE is not fully optimized for this yet, but it was still really good in terms of performance. And now let's do some AI tests. I'm gonna use the subject detection for sky. Wow, the XLE did that quickly. That is crazy right there. It has a fast neural engine. This one took maybe four or five times longer. You know, let's go ahead and add another one. This time let's do the regular subject, which should be that hot air balloon. Let's click that. Once again, the X Elite was quite a bit faster than the Intel. That is impressive. And now I'm gonna export all 50 of these high resolution edited files. Let's go ahead and hit export here, start my timer. And while this is running, I wanna mention that if you're using the Lightroom mobile version, that's actually a little bit quicker because it's optimized for ARM. And with Classic, we have about a 10% or so penalty, but it still did surprisingly well. And right now looking at these, looks like the X Elite might be actually ahead. All right guys, I was not expecting this. The X Elite did that in a minute and 52 seconds compared to two minutes and 12 seconds for this best core seven Intel processor that's fully optimized. That is impressive knowing that it will actually get faster with future updates and it did this while running quieter as well. And guys, now I have to talk about the battery life because even though we didn't finish all of our standard tests here, the Intel is now at 4% battery. And I turned off the power saving modes that will lower um, the performance. And now it's at three. Oh, it went into hibernation mode automatically. Wow, the X Elite is at 39%. So I'm gonna call this basically 40% better battery life under load when you're running tough tasks that suck a lot of power. That is incredible. And then standby when they're just sitting there, the power on the Intel version, the battery just drains way quicker just at idle. That is crazy. So this is practically 3% shut off by itself even though I disabled that. Basically it died where this is still, ha it still has, I don't know, another hour of battery life, really pushing it or many hours for light tasks. That is crazy. So even though the CPU performance is a lot better and graphics is weaker, but not half the performance, the battery life difference is massive. So that is amazing for Windows laptop users. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug both of these back into power. Let's turn this Intel version back on because it fully shut down and we are gonna finish off our tests. And now I'm testing DaVinci Resolve 19. This is actually compiled for ARM as well as x86. And here are standard 504K HEVCs playing back perfectly with some LUTs and film grain applied. So neither of these have issues with the standard footage. And looking at our graphics usage here, the Intel uses between 35 to 39% of its GPU to process this compared to right there, we just hit 60. So between 50 to 60 on the X Elite, meaning that you have more overhead on the Intel uh, laptop with the Intel R graphics for extra effects, titles, animations, things like that. And now I'm gonna export this five minute project. I have the same settings on both of them and let's go ahead and get started. And this is actually interesting to me. We're getting about 20 frames per second on the Intel compared to about 29 to 30 on the X Elite. And we know the X Elite was quite a bit slower than the Max, but it looks like this Intel with the same settings is actually slower at exporting this video, even though it has more graphics power. Of course, both of them are using dedicated encoders for this. Both of them are plugged in, but wow. And there we go. We have four minutes 11 for the X Elite and 558 for the Intel based system, about 25% faster here. That is crazy. So even though this system cannot compete with one of Apple's uh, chips with their media engines, it is still quite a bit faster than the more expensive current Intel system. So bravo to Qualcomm. So what did we learn after doing all of this testing? Well, the X Elite's a much better machine for less money, 
quieter fans. The battery life is way better. And let me tell you guys, if we were to do our full test with displays, speakers, webcams, and our previous videos, instead of focusing on performance, the battery life difference would be even greater. I expect we would have had 50% compared to a dead battery. Double the battery life. That is insane. Now, the Intel does have better graphics for raw graphics power for gaming compute. It is more powerful, but for everything else, the Exile is so much better and the daily day-to-day -day use, it's so snappy no matter what you're doing. It's a whole nother experience. The ARM revolution is here for these thin and light Windows laptops. It's a great machine. And as far as the upgrades to the machine itself, the display, the trackpad, having the extra port, Man, this is a nice balanced computer if you're gonna be running a Windows laptop. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll catch you in the next one.